everybody. This is Michael Strahan, 2014 NFL Hall of Famer. I'm here to throw my hat in the ring for Willie Anderson. Wearing the biggest cleat in Bengals history, a size 18, Willie Anderson steps into the ring with one of the biggest footprints in franchise history as the greatest right tackle in the turn of the century NFL. The guy was an awesome run blocker. Um, he would move the line of scrimmage and at the same time, very light on his feet from pass protection. We had some pretty good outside linebackers in my day. And I can just say week in, week out, as we went against different teams, um, Willie Anderson always stood out. Another four-time Pro Bowler during 12 years in Cincinnati, Anderson also helped change the game by making sure foes didn't turn a blind eye opposite the blind side. The new Bengals, the new team, baby, a new era. Let's start right now. Willie was good from the beginning. You know, there's been a lot of good offensive tackles your rookie year give up five or six sacks, you know what I mean? Willie never did that. While Anderson blocked for Corey Dillon's NFL rookie record 246 yards late in the old century in 1997, he helped pave Dillon's way to the NFL record of 278 yards in the first year of the new one in 2000. He would open up the path for Corey Dillon, and with Corey running behind him, Corey broke two NFL rushing, rushing records. And not just any rushing records, he broke Jim Brown's rookie single game rushing record. Jim Brown. The incredible Jim Brown. Walter Payton's single game rushing record was broken also. And that was 275 yards running behind Willie Anderson. They can't stop it in the middle, man. Until we keep running the in the middle, they can't stop it down there. Willie was certainly the best run blocking tackle in football. So he could just mash them and maul them and knock them off the ball with explosiveness and athleticism. Oh, and Willie just knocked the f Guy, you know what I mean? We should just wear him out with this play. Okay. Our number one play was called 16 Chase. The other name was 16 Will. And they were both, hey, Corey, just go follow Will. Studious and savage, Anderson combined a massive body with ballet feet and a savant's instincts to confound the greatest defensive ends. I saw the PFF stat in the last 20 years. He's got the highest graded pass blocking grade of any tackle to play the game. According to Pro Football Focus, my company, so granted I'm a little biased, he is the best pass protector of the last 20 years. He could diagnose how to block people like no one I've ever seen before. He could watch a certain number of plays. He could tell by a guy's stance. He could tell by the way he initially moves exactly what that guy could do and how he could block him, which is why he gave up 16 sacks in 13 years. Go! Go, baby! You know, this guy was absolutely, absolutely amazing. In his 13 seasons, Willie only gave up 16 sacks. And I don't know if you understand how incredible that is, but I'm going to say it again. In 13 seasons, 16 sacks. He was famous for blocking the guys no one could block. It's kind of funny, they say, oh, you know, I don't know if he's a Hall of Fame player because he played right tackle instead of left tackle. Well, guess what? Half the rushers in the Pro Football Hall of Fame played left end against right tackles. But you don't hear him say, oh, Strahan should go in the Hall of Fame because he played left end. Reggie White should go in the Hall of Fame because he played left end. While left tackles consumed the headlines for protecting the quarterback's blind side, Anderson quietly proved his work on the ignored right side was just as viable and elite. He played 15 games against Pro Football Hall of Fame pass rushers and allowed one sack. I played against Reggie White, and he was one of my first childhood idols. I knew then, like, oh, if he can't beat me, like, there's no one in this league gonna beat me. And I kind of went on that kind of run. 9901, no sacks, one pressure. Three great years that no one didn't notice at the time. They, didn't, they, not, they know now. At PFF, we don't have statistics for the entire career of every player. I wish we had a grade for every snap, but we don't. What we find is that Willie Anderson is slightly behind Jonathan Ogden, on a par with Walter Jones and Steve Hutchinson, and ahead of Will Shields, Alan Fanica, Kevin Mawai, and Orlando Pace. So, in summary, he stacks up incredibly well alongside all of the couldn't Hall of Famers that we have information for. From 2004 to 2006, Anderson became the only right tackle in the last 40 years to be named All-Pro three straight seasons. And you can point to the fact that minimal amount of Pro Bowls, 
Why would you say to you it wasn't because of him? A lot of times when your team's not winning, you're not in the playoffs, um, you don't have the team stats, it certainly can reflect on the individual's uh, postseason honors. But this guy was a pro bowler year in, year out, one of the best in the National Football League. Didn't get recognition that he deserved. But Anderson's legacy is just as immense in the run game. His offensive lines produced the top five rushing seasons in Bengals history. A year or two ago, he and Anthony Munoz were on the field together helping to show our young offensive linemen how to set, how to pass block, how to move. We had these new young players and they were trying hard, but Willie and Anthony, you would have picked them. <laughs> there was no problem about that. In 2022, Willie Anderson became one of five players inducted into the Bengals' Ring of Honor, joining legends Ken Anderson, Ken Riley, Anthony Munoz, and Isaac Curtis. So I start doing some digging, and I start watching film, and I start, I, I get back to where we were, Steve, yeah. you know, I, I'm doing the thing, I'm grading the games, I'm pulling it through, I'm doing all the stuff. And the more I'm watching, the more I'm goggle-eyed and I'm realizing I can't just support this. I have to get completely behind the thing because if there's one person that I've seen that deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, it's Williams. I know as a commentator, as a player, watching the game in and out every week, every day, what greatness is and what beyond greatness is. Willie was beyond great. Willie Anderson is a drop the mic, no brainer, Hall of Famer. Go through the numbers, examine them with a fine tooth comb, and you're going to agree with me. The biggest injustice is that he's not in already. It's number 99 in your program, number one in your heart. Or, oh, if they call me in the Hall of Fame, number 280. Willie Anderson, get it right or get done voting.